excellent spirit. Let it flow, God. In Jesus' name. Come on, let the church, if you agree, say amen. 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 From day. Come on. From day. Hallelujah. To day. Come on. Just like you are. Just tell them that. You, you see, Kevin, the devil lied to you. You did so many great things that he told you that that's what keeps you accepted. And there's a pressure over you. There's a pressure that's making you try to get help from other ways. And the pressure is to succeed so you can keep getting love. But you ain't got to earn it. It's already been given. I'm telling you, we approve. Y'all can think it's a joke. God already do it. I look and I laugh because, amen, Kevin came to me a while back saying he wanted to do something for the young men. He wanted to do something in the, in the community. And I told him something I wanted to do. And he's a young man, and he's a young man that uh, is very, very intelligent. and um, He's different. He's set apart. And we said we were going to work on something this year in the community. Last year we did great things with another young man and his wife, his family. And this year the young man came to me and I told him we're going to, we're going to give up. I, I shared this with some of y'all. It's my vision to go into the community and dress all of our young men in neckties, dress clothes. And y'all can think that's crazy, but... I can't keep telling them God want them to own their own business and God want them to go into higher places and be able to go to the boardroom. And most young men that come from the hood, I'm talking about the real hood, never even wore a necktie. Y'all don't believe that. I'm telling you the truth. I said, Lord, I would love to have the money these other churches have. I would just buy neckties, shirts, and socks. And then I said, can you imagine us going around the city like we did with those turkeys and giving young, especially, especially, not only, but especially young black men. And while we're there, teaching them how to tie the tie, something they never had, so that when they go, see, let me tell you something, the drug game is over. See, I, I got to talk, all old people, close your ears, y'all can't handle this, I got to talk to my young brothers. It's over for the drug game. You playing yourself if you still sell drugs. I got to just talk like that. I know I could say Jesus don't want you to sell drugs. They not listening. I got to tell them straight up, it's over. The retirement plan for the drug dealer is somebody going to tell on you or you're going to die and go to jail. One and the two. That's it. It's over. 
Now it's time to take that hustle to the boardroom. But you can't go in the boardroom with your pants hanging and a white t-shirt because they're gonna turn and they're gonna reject you before you come in the door. Well anyway, I'll tell y'all more about that. As that happened, I get a sister send me a message, say, Pastor, I don't know. But somebody just hit me up and sent me a thing that used to own bow ties and neckties, their own company. Say they're going out of business. Say they're gonna give, they wanna give all of the bow ties to me. They wanna give them to me. Say, in other words, can you use them? Brand new stuff. We approved. We approved. We're approved. Now, we're going to need a whole lot more. We want some regular neckties, too, because we don't want to think we, 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 we want to think we the nation. I like, I got a bow tie on, too. You know, I wear bow ties. We won't let them, you know, young people, they, they can uh, swag it out how they want to. Amen. But I just look at how already God start doing things. If I just ask, he's doing it. So, Kevin, get ready to work with me on that. And then I pray that the Lord will follow you around Amen. with an angel everywhere you go. Everywhere you go. And a word will come behind you yeah. that won't let you rest till you live like you ought to live. Amen. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah. 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 Amen. It's that time. Derek, you see him, you impart wisdom into him. You ain't no baby no more. You, are, you Listen, the stuff I say to you, give it to him. Amen. Now's Amen. your time Amen. to pour into somebody. Amen. When you were a child, you spoke as a child. Right. But now you're coming to help somebody else grow up. Amen. 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 All right, we got to hurry up, y'all. We're running out of time. Everybody all right? Awesome. We reserve the right to stop again anytime and just speak whatever the Lord says. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Yeah, we ain't going dead today, musicians. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. You're approved. Amen. You're approved. Amen. You're approved. Amen. You're approved. I gotta keep speaking and faith come back here. Yes, yes. Come on, man. Listen. All right, we're gonna try to get through these questions. I know you got a bunch. Yeah, got Whole lot of them we didn't even get to. We may not because we're running on time today. We do have a quick meeting. The men, don't worry. I'm not coming to ask and bag y'all for any money or anything. We're gonna have a quick meeting after church. Something that's gonna really blow your mind. Then we'll meet with the women another day. How they'll be able to help. Amen. But this is the first phase will be for the men. We got some great things. Come on, y'all. It's good news we're reading about today. Amen. Isn't that all right? Yes, all right, so we won't hold you long. Amen. We need about 25 minutes to get through as many questions as we can. Amen. 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 All right, Deacon, uh, take us there. Uh, Pastor, mm -hmm. <clears throat> I've been waiting on you to address R. Kelly in this new, <laughs> in this new docuseries. I probably should have stayed talking about we approve. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> But go ahead. Some are saying this is no different than how our grandparents did things back in the day. I know you were having interest, an interesting outlook, laughing out loud. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. I didn't. <laughs> I, 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 listen, I didn't. I know y'all were waiting on Facebook for me to say something. I didn't do it because, number one, I don't have to always say something. Sometimes a wise man said nothing. Amen. <laughs> I've already preached about this 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. So when everybody else want to talk about something, I think I'll get quiet. They too late. They late. See, we addressed this stuff way before time. Uh, what, what, you wanna, what did they say again, Bob Kelly? They just want to know. Some are saying this is no different than how our grandparents did things back in the day. Listen, let me just say this real quick. I'm going to give my thoughts. And then never after that, I'll give what's really important, God's word. Because my thoughts don't mean anything. Amen. Amen. There was a time the ages were different as it pertained to marriage. Everybody in here know that. Amen. Many people think the Bible is silent on the issue of pedophilia. Mm -hmm. 
That's what it is. But the Bible is not sour. It may not use the term or the word pedophile, but the Bible talks about lust, uncleanness. And listen, for those that don't believe that R. Kelly is, listen, the Bible get him like it get everybody else. Now, Pastor, why ain't you saying nothing now? Because for 10 years, I preached about the long-reaching effects of children that have been molested, abused, taken advantage of, and not just by rock and roll singers, right in the church. Yeah. Amen. This ain't nothing new for me. Come on and say amen. Now, I know I heard y'all thought some of y'all arguing about they railroading the black man. Every time a black man get in trouble, they railroading the black man. I understand. But I got one thing to say about sin. Sin kills. Yeah. And it don't affect the black man only, it affect every man. Amen. Amen. Now, let me deal with this. From an earthly perspective, I say this to you that's watching me, to anyone that might pick us up on YouTube or on the radio. I have no problem with those that want to hang Mr. R. Kelly for as long as you go get all of his buddies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Hang them all. Yeah. I want you to go back and dig up. Mr. Play, Bishop Playboy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's his name? I want you to dig up Mr. Hugh Hefner. Mm -hmm. Hefner. <laughs> Who was it? How old was he? And stayed with 18 year old girls. And younger. Don't play yourself. They yeah. were younger as well. Yeah. Years and years. Other celebrities have done this. This yeah. is nothing new. So from that perspective, yes, but let me give a warning to all of you that lust after the careers and celebrity uh, popularity and want to be in the limelight. When they get finished with you, yeah. this is what they do. Yeah, they ring you out. Huh? They ring you out, they don't they? You out. Now, I'm not making no excuses for R. Kelly. I just want to know one thing that nobody say, or very few people are saying. After we argue, no, I haven't seen this. I haven't looked at the series yet. I'm late. I'm still trying to get over bird. I'm surviving bird box. Yeah, that's a question, too. We got a, we got a question on that one, too. <laughs> I'm still trying to get y'all to take the blindfolds off. <laughs> but I will look at it because y'all won't <laughs> let me not look at it. So I'm going to look at the series. And here's what I want to say. Where are the parents? And all the other adults. You said the Bible don't talk about that. Yes, it does. The book of Matthew, chapter 18, it says, don't offend my little ones. Now, I'm going to say some stuff that's going to be very touchy, but I'm going to do it quickly. I told this church and those who could hear me on the radio years ago, never mind R. Kelly, this is going on everywhere. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You got nasty, no good, dirty, and filthy old men mm -hmm. that go sniffing around behind little girls. Yep. Right in your household. No. Uncles, daddies, yep. brothers, listen to what I'm telling you. Yeah. And nobody want to talk about nobody it. Nobody said a word. Y'all want me to talk? I'm going to talk all the way. That's real. Now it's popular to talk bad about R. Kelly. But when you were singing 12 play. <laughs> Seems like you're ready. Seems like you're ready. <laughs> see, if, see, he was sick. He thought she was ready. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't popular then, so you all couldn't take a stand. Now you want to go crazy on him. Yeah. 25 years later. Government, politics, powers that be, after you made, when you were making your money at the height of his career, hush, hush. you protected him. Yep. And hush, they were, hush. listen to me, and there were reports, and you pushed it aside so that he could continue yep. to make money for you. Yep. And now you want to talk about after you're done with it. Wrong him out. 
Now, I'm not defending them because this is a crime shame. But it's not just there, it's in the church. Yeah. I want to know where are the parents. Where you at? I'm going to tell you what happened. Mm-hmm. You parents who are listening to me, you have prostituted your own daughter. Come on now. Yeah. In the book of Leviticus. Sure, it might have started out as innocent, starstruck feelings of overwhelming uh, joy to be around a superstar. But to hear the mother say these words, I never, ever, you know, he was dating Aaliyah, Mm -hmm. the singer, Aaliyah, and he married her under age. And I heard the mother say the other day that she never left her or or Aaliyah's father, never left uh, Aaliyah alone. She always watched him. How did they go and get married? If you were always watching. Exactly. I'm looking for where are the parents. And y'all on Facebook, y'all didn't want me to talk because what I was going to post is this. Some of you sisters, let me blame first of all, I have no good brothers that are not in their place. Amen who have abandoned their homes, Amen. like cowards, yeah. who go around dropping seed, huh? Go around making babies, and then run into, listen, from house to house. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, yeah. Hold, let's hold accountable who we need to talk about first. Yeah. Then I want to talk to the sisters who are so needy. You want a man so bad. So bad. That you'll let a man come into your house. See, we ain't got to talk about R. Kelly, because while y'all were posting on Facebook, I was posting in my mind about y'all. Because the truth of the matter is, you'll bring a man into your house just so you can tell everybody you got a man, man. and he's slipping in the bedroom with your daughter. And when your daughter tell you about it, When your daughter say he do, he looking at it. See, she coming out the bathroom. He peeping. Yeah. Y'all want to talk? Let's talk. It's real talk. It's real talk. And you know in your heart that he won't, not just you, he won't hurt because she look like a younger you. Mm. And he think because he's a dog, he think he can get two for the price of one. And because you are so in need and don't know who you are. You accept him to do that. Come on. Come on. Somebody ought to say amen. Amen. I don't play no games. No, sir. We're going to preach the truth here. Ain't no wiggle room. Amen. The Bible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You knew what you were doing, Miss Aaliyah, mother. Yeah. And daddy. And da- oh, daddy. Yeah, yeah. You ain't no daddy. No, you ain't no daddy. You knew what you were doing. But the Bible says it this way. Do not prostitute thy daughter. Hold on, what? Do not prostitute thy daughter. Stop selling your baby out like a little whore. Yeah. To cause her to be a whore. That's what the Bible says. Yeah. You better read it again and give me an address, Deacon. Leviticus 19, 29. Do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore. You see, this is a little uncomfortable, but y'all should have left me alone. Exactly. I was on I'm, a, I'm approved. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> But as parents, we push our children into places we couldn't go. That's right. That's right. And we do it at the expense of, a dollar. of them being, watch this, mm-hmm. prostituted. Mm-hmm. Young men in the church, you love the bishop so much. Single ladies, listen to me. Because nobody else going to talk about this. I'm going to talk about it today. Yep. You love the bishop so much. Yep. You know he got sugar in his tank. Uh, uh. But you send your little boys to go on the road with Bishop uh-huh. because you want him to be a random man of God. Yeah. And he go get a hotel room and he's got your son in the bed. Mm. And then he said, we're going to raise him up and call him an armor bearer. Yeah. Yeah. Church, don't talk about this. Real. It's so heavy, the Church of God in Christ got a crisis hotline because so many of them can't keep their hands off. Yeah. Yeah. And it ain't just them, the it's pastors. all of them. Yeah, the women pastors doing it too. Women pastors. Doing it to the girls. Fine, yeah, come on, Deacon. Yep. Fine, 
young daughters. Or broken women. That's broken. Yep. And they find you. Yep, grown broken women. And they said, those men don't know how to love you, baby. They create a spirit in you to hate men. And then here comes Bishop Butch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 2019, we ain't playing. <laughs> don't ask me if you don't want to know. Most of you women apostles, not all, I did not say all, most of you, your ministry was birthed out of hurt from a man. Amen. And your whole ministry is 50 women and two henpecked men. Come on now, come on. And then you align yourself and connect with those women emotionally mm. and you key in on their weakness mm -hmm. because you know how to manipulate mm. Their vulnerability. Mm -hmm. because been and because they are hurting yeah. and they see you as a woman of God, yeah. before you know it, you're using that charisma. Mm -hmm. Like witchcraft. witchcraft. Yeah. To crawl into bed with the sisters. Mm. I know what you are. I can tell how you carry, you carry yourself like a man. Yeah. Yeah. You got a man title. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Walk like a man. Dress like one. So if you're going to talk about it, let's talk all the way about it. Yeah. Ain't no way out. Ask questions to your children. Ask yeah. questions of your children. That's right. I done went on the road, took young men with me. I had young men stand in my house even before I came into the church. Not one of them. Man, I pay top dollar to hear one of them say, I even look like. I'm going to say, come on up in here. You can lay in here with me. <laughs> No sir. No sir. No sir. No sir. No sir. Absolutely not. <laughs> no sir. Young men go on the road. Some of the young brothers are with me down in Norfolk when, before I even got uh, they stay with me overnight. Go on in, y'all get y'all or get on the floor. <laughs> Pastor gonna sleep in the bed. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. We none of that, yo. Hey, yes, sir. <laughs> Amen. Well. Only boy I put my lips on to kiss in that way. And anyway, like that, it's my own son. Your own child. Yeah. And then there's a way I conduct exactly. myself exactly. even with exactly. him. That's right. And let me say this to you, because nobody talking about it. There's a certain way baby girl ought to sit in granddaddy lap. That's right. That's right. A certain age. Certain age? Yep. Get up. See, that's why they hate us. Yeah, wisdom. But this is the stuff where our children are really hurting. Yeah. And nobody will address these things. Yeah. But I'm not scared, so help me. As long as the Holy Ghost give me help, we're going to cry loud and spare not. Save our children. Yes, sir. Operation Save Our Children. Yes. Start running around the church. You an older man. Oh, come sniffing around. And some of you, they might be legal. You still too old. Leave them alone. <laughs> Nobody wants your old tail. <laughs> Sit your old tail down. <laughs> what you going to do? Some of you, they may be legal, but they don't want you. All they can do is see if they can get some dollars out of your old tail. <laughs> <laughs> they going to get it too. If you don't get mad like I get mad about yeah. it, you don't care. Yeah, you part of the problem. You part of the problem. You part of the problem. Yeah. So guess what? Yeah. No, I don't want to talk now. I wanted to talk way back then yeah. well, when he was that. selling platinum yeah. albums. Yeah. Now the problem, listen to me, now the damage is done and everybody finished making money. Let's make fun of R. Kelly. Yeah. Should have stopped it a long time ago. Yep. Yeah, I'm going to speak up for the brothers that's hurt have been taken advantage of in the church. Mm -hmm. Sisters in and out the church. What the Bible say? Come on, Deacon, I got to move. Do not prostitute thy daughter that cause her to be a whore. That's what the Bible say. How come your preacher don't talk like that? Lest the land fall to whoredom. You see the whole land get messed up yeah. when the parents sell their children out. And the land so that's why even though you're talking about R. Kelly, I took it back to the home. Yeah. Because when the home is out of place. Amen. Huh? Don't make, how else can you prostitute your daughter? 
Don't take her there and there buy a bunch of stuff when she dressed naked. Yeah, yeah. That's how you prostitute your daughter. That's right. Come on, get out there. Talk to him. He got money. Yeah. What? Oh, yes, they do. Oh, yeah. Well, I believe it. Amen. He beating on me, mama. Yeah, but yeah, listen, all men get have go through some. Why? He got a few dollars. Church don't talk about it. Mm -hmm. So, is there an age? Let me say this. Is there an age? The Bible don't give a specific age. One scripture in, in, in Ezekiel 16, God described his relationship metaphorically with the church. He won't, listen, God said he wouldn't even take the church as a bride until she matured enough. If God won't even do that metaphorically, then men, you need to leave a little girl alone. That's right. Amen. Huh? Man, we get everybody. Sugar daddies. Yes. Gold diggers. Gold diggers. Mm -hmm. Sugar mamas. Yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> My mother ran a few away when, I, when we were younger. He's a cool. <laughs> That's the truth. One of them came into the church. I let her one day, she'll tell you the story, because she'll tell it better. Woman well, old, way older than my mom. And I was in my 20s then. I was a young man then. She said, yes. Then what she did, y'all ready for this? She said, I'm getting ready to get a lot of money. See, she already knew I wouldn't want her. So she figured she'd get something that I might want. I'm not lying about this. She, tried to she said, I'm getting ready to run into a million. She, she, had beef. she said, and that man right there, talking about me, I was 20 something. She said, I would love to just be in his arm. <laughs> I said, well, I understand that. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> My mama, I don't know whether she was saved at this point or not, but she let me tell you what she told her. Yeah, yeah we were right at Virginia Randolph. Yeah, true story. Yeah, My mama told her. <laughs> she called my mama, said, I want to invite him to dinner, tell him about the money that's coming. My per then she called me and said, I prefer that your mother and them don't come. <laughs> she said, see.